Oh, there we are. Does that mean like our video is going to be delayed from our audio? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. In this economy? Can't afford it. Expect delays. <laughs> Supply chain issues in our podcast. Yep. <laughs> Oh, were those? Where did you get those glasses with the, with the dents in them for your thumb? The glasses with the dents in them for the thumb. I think these are not Canadian Tire. These must be Costco. Mm, okay. Yeah, look at that curvature. Yeah, ergonomics at its finest. Ergonomic. Mm. I love your T-shirt. Freddy's Soul Pizza. Bring me more. <laughs> And it's just like people's heads as souls, and he's eating them. It's a Nightmare on Elm Street 4 reference. <clears throat> <laughs> he decides that all of the people he's ever killed are little meatballs on a pizza, and he, like, takes one and, like, eats it. <laughs> Do you know what the, the sad thing is about my track record for horror? Is that I think that I've seen that. Good. <clears throat> oh, I mean, yes. However... Scream is as far as I'll go with you. <laughs> oh, really? You, you're I just not a so. horror girl? No. Oh, I didn't no. know that. I didn't know that, actually. I'm terrified of horror. Oh, well, I appreciate you going down that Scream rabbit hole with me. I That is the franchise to watch right now, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. so. Slasher, slasher is terrifying. It's, it's not as terrifying as Paranormal. And Freddy is, like, straddling that line. The but Fre Freddy's, like, a queer icon. Like, he's, like, the horror icon that the gays love. Because he's just, like, so camp and, like, he's I'll sassy. Watch, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many, so many theme drag. Yes. Drag. <laughs> so much theme drag around Freddy, but he's a great He's a great drag base to build off of, for sure. He's yeah. camp. Freddy is camp. But I digress. Um, good morning, sinners. Welcome mm. to the full volume podcast. I am your host, one of your hosts, Harvey Brent, joined by Miss Thing herself. Uh, your wait, mistress of the night. Yeah, that that kind of works. Yeah, that checks out. J. Jolie, mistress of Talbot Street. Yes. Um. So. So yeah, the night. <laughs> um, I had such a t terrible sleep. Did you? Yeah, I look Sorry. rugged. Like, <laughs> ragged. Fine. Rugged. Fine. Okay, but yes. I, I, we accept you. Okay. D yeah, okay. So, yes, I'm G.I. Jolie. <laughs> I was trying to make a, like, Satanist priestess joke for the sinner opening, but my brain's just... not... You can just say Hail Satan. That should suffice. Hail <laughs> I Satan. Like to... <laughs> Hail Satine. Oh, Satine. you mean Nicole Kidman in <coughs> 19... Wait, 2001 Moulin Rouge? No. 2001? 2002? When did Moulin Rouge come out? <laughs> we can't even ask Google. The internet is down. Oh my god. Were you Rogers? No. I am. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, she's out of service. I got no text messages yesterday. Uh, do you know what? I My phone is, but my internet is not. Oh, okay. Yeah, my internet is not Rogers. I was okay. But, like, I can't wait to get my $4 credit on my $110 phone bill. Thank you, oh, it's gonna Canada be Telecom. So, <laughs> it's going to be so lucrative. <laughs> wow. Um, the first chance I get after I pay off my phone, I'll probably switch plans. But... <laughs> what? What, so when we endure another cyber attack? <laughs> I'm, kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, do you think? I don't know. I don't um, know about anything anymore. No. I hear that it was that, but I also am like, well, they are switching. Yeah. They're doing something. I just, like, I can't be bothered anymore to care. Just, like, take me out. <laughs> just... Yeah. <laughs> Take me down to the river. Uh, yeah. Today we are reading, or reading, we're not reading. Yeah, sometimes we read. <laughs> sometimes we read. Hello, this Wikipedia. one we might go to the library for. 
<laughs> the library is open. Um, we are going to recap episode five of Disney's Miss Marvel. Yeah. Yay! Yay! <clears throat> it, like, whatever. I, I kind of, like, <laughs> texted you and I was like, what the fuck? But, like, it's it was okay. It's just, like, some things I didn't like. But is it worse than Moonlight? Moon Knight? No. Still better than Falcon and Winter Soldier. Oh, world's better. And kind of on par with... It still fit with the rest of the series. Yeah. Not better than WandaVision, I don't think. Not better than the first half of WandaVision. I need to preface that, that with this. <laughs> Nothing is better than that first half. That was... I, I was like, when did David Lynch start directing a new show? Like, <laughs> that's what I thought. <clears throat> yeah. But that's why we're not getting any more Twin Peaks. That's <laughs> it's too busy, at Wanda. So, so episode five of Miss Marvel really is a a flashback, and with flashbacks bring exposition, as we know. So in India, we get a flashback to India in 1942, where Aisha takes refuge in a village where she meets Hassan, an Indian independence activist, and she's drawn to her house because of why a little cute little flowers. Uh, but he offers her food and shelter, and she accepts. Great. We're off to a great start. Aisha, by the way, is... Which they never, like, explicitly say, but Aisha is mm-hmm. Kamala's great-grandmother, which I had never heard the words once. I don't know about you. I, um... I think it happened once three episodes ago. Okay. Or, like, when the bangles came, mm. and she first called her grandmother. Okay. Yes. And like it, it was like, a long time ago. It was a long time ago. It was not in this episode, but like, you know, we're not an idiot. Like I can make the I can yeah. connect the dots. But I mean, for those of you that maybe are even more casual fans than we are, and you're like, who is this bitch? She is Kamala's great grandmother. Yes. Anyway, she meets Hassan, super cute. They fall in love and they have a child who is Kamala's grandmother, Hassana. Uh five years after that, you know, just live in La Vida Loca, as you do. Uh, Najma finds Aisha and orders her to retrieve the bangle. Najma's not, like, giving me, like... She's not giving me, like, elegance this episode. She's not giving me beauty. She's not giving me grace. She's giving me just, like... Tired Tomb Raider. Ty- oh, my God, that's the term. <laughs> she is t- tired Tomb Raider. <laughs> she's over she- it. She- she was over it 80 years ago. No wonder why she's a bitch right now. <laughs> yeah, she's just like, okay, people. It's a <laughs> freaking bangle. Oh my God. Yeah. What's a clandestine got to do? What's a girl got to do to get back to her dimension? Can I get a what, what, ladies? Like, it's just <laughs> very, you know. So Aisha leaves, it to Sa- uh, leaves the bangle with Sana and, and their attempt to flee to the new nation of Pakistan. So this is against the backdrop of the Great Partition. I don't know why I put the word great in there. Not everything needs to be great. This was not great. Partition was not great. But this is the, this is like them attempting to flee to Pakistan because that is um, where they expected Muslim, people of Muslim faith to go to. Am I correct in saying that? Yes. And okay. yeah. And the husband. Hassan. D- Daddy Hassan. Mm-hmm. is very vocally Muslim and they're starting to feel mm-hmm. the effects of it in their small town. Like, yes, they won't sell milk to yes. Aisha. They, people will barely like, they can't, they can't do anything in their town because he's Muslim. Yeah. And like, she's card carrying, but she like, she dabbles. Yeah. She dabbles, but like, yeah, that's a great example. Sorry. Like, yeah, like literally they're feeling ostracized in their community. And, you know, this new nation of Pakistan is there basically not built as a Muslim sanctuary, but as a place where you are likely to face less persecution. And we see that train station. It is loaded with people. Mm-hmm. So anyways, they're on their they're on their way. They go to the train station, but Najma intercepts Aisha and knifes her, gives her a real yeah. good stabiana in the stomach. Ugh. Yeah. Again, Najma was over it. She was tired 80 years ago. Like, get anyway. her home. <laughs> Somebody get this girl a ticket to the next dimension. Uh, <laughs> Hassan and Sana are, they're separated in the chaos. Um, so, dad and daughter. Dad, and, yeah. They're separated in the chaos in the train station there. 
And that's when Kamala, the, the red converse hit the ground. <laughs> Boom. We're on we're on the move. Uh Kamala is able to interact with Aisha. Uh so Aisha's like laying dying in like almost like a wheelbarrow. Yeah. Is that what it was? And uh she asks her to guide Sana before dying. And so this is kind of like this is the tea though, that like literally Kamala influence the future without even realizing it like what do you call that it's like a circuitous time it's time travel light yeah <laughs> so many episodes of the things i watched the uh this week had time travel as the theme that's the theme this was it orville yeah okay <laughs> twice in a lifetime i almost was like today we watched miss marvel episode whatever twice in a wait this is the second time i've mixed these up but yeah okay so it's, it turns out uh that she produces she tries to produce the hard light to get mm-hmm. sana to sort of to walk towards her father like to guide like her ta- that way you're talking like the steps right like yeah yeah <clears throat> mm-hmm. yes uh and then kamala realizes like she, yeah she was destined she's the one to reunite them which is so cool and so fulfilling and like Gives it like a family. It ties together all the relationships within the family. Obviously, barring Hassan, because he's kind of just like a, a side character. But mm-hmm. you know, it gives the family more context. Uh, and this is a very, very family-driven show. So I, I understand that. <clears throat> However, <laughs> when we return to the present, so after that, uh, Najma or uh, Kamala gets you know sucked back into the present. She's, she's done her exposition. We get it. She returns to the present. And she finds that Najma's strike from the end of episode four, it opened that veil of Noor so that, to the other uh, dimension. And it kills anyone that touches it. It just vaporizes them in a very, like, 90s, like, you turn to skeleton and then just crumble. Like, that's very 90s to me. Or, like, not even 90s. That's, like, Indiana Buffy. Jones. Yeah, oh, Indiana Buffy, Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Just like a it's... little more detail in the bone. Probably the CG is a little more sophisticated. Yeah. But, like, it was very, it was giving me that, like, very, which is fine. But, and this is the part that just made me slither off my couch into, like, a what the fuck, is Najma transfers her power to Kamran and then kills herself. Mm, Yeah, because, like, Kamala says something. uh, She's like, don't, like, you took a mother away from a a child. You made a child motherless. Don't do that to Kamran. And she's like, has, like, a you think she has a change of heart and then she doesn't she's like oh i figured out a way this this is the part that was like too yeah. much of an it too superhero for me it was like too much of a um unwilling i'm unwilling to suspend my disbelief for this but she somehow because suddenly clandestines can do this it cuts to Comrade. must be nice <laughs> <laughs> wherever the fuck he's in the world slash he's in america is he not? like in in jersey basically he's in jersey imagine his, his eyes glow and suddenly he's imbued with power okay cool like first of all yeah it must be nice to just like tell us she can do that on the spot that's a little lazy second not pleased with this whole like najma conclusion that's that is poor writing that's not great no, yeah, so suddenly it cracks a hole. Okay, so the hole is cracked. Najma can go through it, and she does. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. it. And it closes the veil, which I think, like, okay, cool. But, but did, I you make, like, yeah. did you make it to the other side? I don't, I don't think you did, bitch. I think you died. So yeah. I, <laughs> was it worth it? Was it worth it? Mm. I don't know. I And, like, mm. to be honest, when you, like, now that she's, out seemingly out of the show like i get a chance to kind of like think back and look at her from episode three <laughs> she was only introduced in episode three was it or the end of episode two end of episode two yeah uh, kind of an underwritten character and it should have meant more and everything is just abrupt and it was not well done and i'm miss marvel you you know you know better yeah you know better i thought that them like, I thought that we were trying to prevent the clandestines from entering that porthole at all, portal at all costs. Yeah. Because, yeah. Stump. And then There's they do just, it and then nothing happens. They do it and then nothing happens. So Bruno's warning from episode two or three, three episode three, was just all for nothing. 
I mean, again, we have one more episode. So, like, I'm trying not to, like, come down too hard on this. But the way it sets it up is not in the show's favor. And it leaves us with a lot. I'm, I am scrupulous. Mm. I'm scrupled. Double scrupled. Yeah. <laughs> Double scrupuli. <death. laughs> scrupuli. I guess, the, you know, maybe we'll we'll get on next week. And we'll be like, oh, JK. It, it ended up fine, but like the way it's set up right now is not promising. Who's no. the big bad? Is it the center of um, damage control? What, what are they called? DOD. The DODC or something. Um, Department it, of. I think it's damage control. Yeah, DODC. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, it's like, what are they the big bad? Because uh, let me tell you right now, they were also not set up very well. So. I what's the conflict <laughs> exactly Who's, who and oh yeah and suddenly so uh the another really important part too is that through all of this uh kamala and nani right i love nani yes they are at the train station we forgot to mention they go to the train station to get kamala and they see oh no maniba you're talking oh. Maniba, Maniba and Nani go to the train station. Sorry. Yes, we should talk about that. I am literally so sorry. We forgot to talk about that. No. So this is the only redeeming part that made me forget about all of the bullshit. Oh, actually, there's two redeeming parts, but we'll we'll talk about Bruno later. Um, we, we do talk about Bruno on this podcast. Yes, we have to. <laughs> we have to. Um, so they are at the train station and they see and Nani is like, you're the little light girl? That's what Maniba said. That's oh, what her yeah. mom said, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I keep mixing them up. Yeah. In my mind, Nani means mom. <laughs> I, I think Nani's, like, the way I think about it, it almost sounds like Nana. So that's how I've been, like, yeah. in my head. But, yeah, Maniba, which her reaction was interesting. I can't tell if I love it or if I don't. I think I love it because yeah. it's, like, played for... Whenever, like, a superhero comes out, I always compare it to a coming out. I mean, that's just, like, my frame of reference. But, like, Maniba just seemed very, oh, wow, you're that light girl. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And that was it, which I kind of think I enjoyed. Yeah. So I think, I think I'm for it. It's just, it's just so weird that it was made into nothing. Maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> but also, like, maybe because they exist in the MCU and maybe because Maniba's been through it, been through the ringer at this point, she, who knows, maybe she was snapped by Thanos. Like, you know, maybe people have seen some shit you know so it's not it's not devastating like it was when mj found peter parker uh you know in the middle of the new york city harbor when he was fighting doc ock and spider-man 2 like it's it's a different level now of like okay superheroes fucking exist like it's you yeah. know what i mean like oh shit my kid's got superpowers okay yeah i guess i think i like it i think Me i too. like it yeah yeah just like like um, just like a great coming out story. Oh, <laughs> seems like also another uh, Orville plot. But the a parent literally just looks at their child and is like, you're perfect. Cool. You're perfect, darling. Cool. You just have like a little added special. Yeah. That yeah, might, many... yeah, we might have to navigate some other things, but this is nothing we can't handle. Thank you. You'd be, you'd be such a good mom to a, or auntie or whomever to a, to a gay kid. You were an yeah. ally. <laughs> yeah. Well, my niece came out to me, and I think that made me realize that I was gay, too. Oh. Like, but we'll, we'll not come out on this podcast. Did I just? Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, I was like, well, hold on. <laughs> Hello, Amsterdam. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> we, we, we need less straight people in the world. Let's be real. It's yeah. Just... Because honestly, the, you know, the more you think about it, well, the more I think about it, at least. And I'm like, mm, no. Yeah. I can't watch. Okay. Maybe that's what I was like. Is this why I hate Nicole Kidman? Again, this full circle back to Moulin Rouge. I was like, I'm supposed to be, and I've been taught to be attracted to Ewan McGregor, which I am, by the that's way. That's fine. <clears throat> but also, Nicole Kidman. Okay, hello. She kind of, like, transcends all levels of, like, rules of attraction, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> Not to downplay what you're saying. I'm just saying, I'm like, I see it, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. She's 
Yeah. And um yeah, there there are just some people. There are just some people who are mm. just it is no yeah. It, there is no longer a question. Yeah. I think for Michael it's Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> for both of us, it's Edward Pat, Edward Robert Pattinson. Oh my I God! I keep forgetting Mike's a Twilight stand. Like it always makes me so happy. <laughs> Team Edward. I just I, I've known Mike a long time, and I just it always it always shocks me. It always shocks me whenever you remind me Michael is a Twilight stand. I love yeah. it. And it's like at first I felt like it was I- I- ironic. And in a way, for me too, it's ironic, but that's a little bit unironic. I that's how I feel about Riverdale, though. I'm I'm an ironic Riverdale stan. Like I hate watch the shit out of that show, but I will watch it. I stopped watching this season because I couldn't take it anymore. My heart. <laughs> I don't even know what's like. Archie's been dead, and I'm like, but it's also like not real. And I, I yeah, I it's know. like a multi. Julie, Julie was like, it's like a multiverse there now too. I was like, what? <laughs> I hate Why? Riverdale so much, but I love it. <laughs> okay, so I'll go back. They don't apologize about shit. Like, they just no. do whatever they want. <laughs> they just Cheryl Blossom that shit into existence. <laughs> oh my god, I love that show. <laughs> I hate it, but I love it. Anyways, <sighs> okay, we digress. Back to, back to Mar- uh, Ms. Marvel. Well, anyways, back in Jersey, after Comron gets imbued with his mother's essence. Uh, <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I don't know how else to say that without making our viewers just like, just without triggering them. Uh, Comron seeks refuge in Jersey with the only person he knows who is Bruno. Well, I mean, he knows Kamala, but like Kamala's AFK, away from keyboard. So the, he seeks refuge with Bruno, who he thinks is named Brian. And <laughs> she's just like so uncomfy. And then they're attacked by a DODC drone, and then Comron destroys it with his was it light yes it was light lasers lasers but the the explosion destroys the convenience store under bruno where bruno lives so aka kind of like bruno's like only home yes and we find out he doesn't have parents oh they said that before what or maybe i feel like they said that in a previous episode because i knew he was an orphan before this episode oh shoot i missed that bit yeah Sorry, I think like they, oh, there was, I don't remember which episode, but anyways, but yeah, for for anybody that's watching the show casually, like we do, Bruno does not have parents and he's taken care of by, uh, it's not Kamala's dad, is it? That runs the convenience store? No. Maybe that's what it is. And that's why they're so close. We obviously prepare a lot on the full volume podcast. So. But we also prepare with many guesses. We we have a lot of guesses for the casual ADHD viewer who's on their phone while they watch the show. <clears throat> that's not that's not me. Could that was not me. Be us. That's not me. No. 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 Okay, that was me this episode though. <laughs> me a little bit too. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Uh, once she fell asleep in that flower field, and I was like, Yeah. I was seeing how Bollywood attractive mom and dad were. I picked up my phone and started the doom scroll. Oh my god, we love a good bad news cycle. Yeah. <laughs> Let's end the world. Um, by the way, Hassan was played by Fawad Khan. Get it? Mm-hmm. Yes, Get sir. It. Hollywood. Um, Get it. <laughs> also, he has diabetes, which somehow makes him hotter. So. <laughs> Because you want to take care of the ones that are broken. Yes, that is exactly <laughs> what so it is. so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke, people. Ladies, we were all guilty of it. Yeah, we are. Um, That's why Brent's married, so. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love, love you if you're hearing us. <laughs> uh, anyways. <laughs> Who do you think the big bad is going to be in episode six? Is it going to be the DODC? Is it going to be Thanos reincarnated? Is it going to be Al Pacino as Mephisto? <laughs> Who are they going to fight in the final episode of Miss Marvel next week? Maybe they fight their feelings. <sighs> I, I, at this point, who knows? I don't know. 
I don't. The, whoever the big bad is, they ain't set up very well. Unless is it Najma coming back as a as a manifestation? I don't know. She maybe is... she brings like a clandestine army back from the the Vale of Noor, and she's like, "Let's go, ladies," you know, and starts. <laughs> I don't know. Sharking them out because the, them out. the worlds are supposed to collide, is what we've been told. Yes. Yeah, and there's your Illuminati symbol for this season. <laughs> Slash Jay Z reference. Jay Z, yeah. <laughs> um, play us off, Jolie. Where can they find us? They can find us, and they can also um, spin their wheels with us on social media. It's at www.comicbooksyndicate.com. <clears throat> I swear to God, I'll get our episodes posted. That's me being lazy since Peacemaker. Oh my God, don't even. I was worry so about dejected it. after Moon Knight. Oh my God, but if you're not, uh, if you're not on our website you can access all of these videos on our youtube channel that's comic book syndicate and you can also listen to this episode and every episode before it and every episode coming wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts that's like spotify stitcher iHeartRadio, like pocket Casts, apple itunes if you leave us a rating because you can leave us ratings now it really helps to kind of like you know boost us into the upper echelons of number 64 in the Columbia. the most listened to tv after shows in Columbia. wow what's the how many well, how many did it list please say more than 64 probably 100 like okay <laughs> that means i think i i oh i mentioned it to jo i was on the josh episode and he I mean, I did poor math, but I, that means that there are 36 episodes, there's 36 other after show podcasts about other nonsense that are listened to less than ours, 36 or more. And I think that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Columbia. Columbia has how many people? Hold on. Columbia, the country. Oh, C Columbia. They definitely have my good friend Carolina. <clears throat> She's yeah. living. I feel like she's living there and listening, so I'm raising my coffee to you. Almost Ooh, 51 I... million people. Excellent. Come Excellent. through. Come through Colombia. Come through Belgium. Come through Nebraska. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, was that our sign off? Are we done? I think so. Okay. I well, until. You. Yep. And then we're going to be back next week with the season finale, possibly series finale, we don't know yet, of Miss Marvel. Until then, keep it loud. Keep it full volume. Bye-bye.